And Are You Okay is a not safe for work podcast, so any young listeners are discouraged from continuing. However, we literally have no way to track that. So do whatever the hell you want and enjoy the show. we should make the episode title tentative IV. Tantive <laughs> IV. And then I was like, I wonder if I'm the only person who calls it the tantive IV instead of like the tantive four. Cause I right. feel like everyone, like I don't, I refuse to call it at, at Oh, an at at it's an at at all terrain <laughs> armor transport. Right. You know yeah, I'm, I'm, not saying, like, that's, I'm not calling it an at at <laughs> like you don't call it an at st for the at s a t s t. Yeah, like, exactly. Exactly. So, no, I like it. I like it. That's a deep cut. It's a deep cut. That's like if you know, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> Somebody I mean, will I, appreciate that. So it's it's tentative IV, I guess. I'm rolling. <laughs> I'm rolling. Or tentative four, <laughs> however you want to fucking say it. Okay. I'm not your boss. <laughs> They're just words. They don't control us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm rolling. So, I'm so after, it. you know, I mean, I guess uh, not not nearly as long as hiatus as usual, but you, I mean, we're, you're listening to and are you okay? A Star Wars podcast. A Star Wars podcast. That's right. We are back. <laughs> We're excited. We're excited. Sans yeah, Ray the Ruiner. She was just for Ahsoka, but that's okay because me she'll, and she'll Matt. Be, she'll be back on other things. She'll yeah, we'll do other things, things with her. We still know, got rings she, of power cooking. Yeah, <laughs> she can ruin other things. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Big fact. So, but I'll say you're stuck with her for the rest of your life now. <laughs> that's right. I don't plan on changing that one. There you go. <laughs> so ah, she can ruin mad cool. things for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out, sure. shout out to Ray. Shout out Throw to Ray. Ray. I'm sure she'll be she'll be uh, people will be looking forward to her return. In addition to some other guests we have, hopefully returning. You know, from yeah, you know, we, we've had quite a few people hop in and out of these Annie Are You Okay episodes. But you can always count on me and baby. Matthew Porter, Rogue One, Rogue One checking in, baby, checking in to talk all things Star Wars. Before we get started, this episode has been made while the Screen Actors Guild is fighting for their rights to be paid fair wages the writers guild has negotiated but the screen actors guild is still fighting for the good fight you know to make sure that they are getting paid fair wages and not being taken advantage of by extremely predatory gigantic companies that make all of this content that we happen to love um <laughs> you know, big facts i mean they are the entities that put it out but it, it takes a lot of people who have creative minds and work very hard to put this stuff out and uh you know it's nothing if not a sum of all of those parts coming together, uh, they're just the umbrella that happens to to shade them all from the rain, you know. Absolutely. So, spread Absolutely. a little more shade. <laughs> spread it. Spread it. It, take, it and, takes uh, a village. Multimedia, a village. billion dollar companies. It takes a village. Yeah, <laughs> it takes a hardworking team of people to make beautiful things like this. Uh, I can't do it without Matt. You know. You know. So. You know. And Mikey, you keep us crispy clean, no caffeine on, across all platforms, That's across our trying. multiverse of podcasting that I'll we're stop. building. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I guess without further ado, I should also plug in a little spoiler warning here. We're not going to shy away from spoilers on this episode. Uh, we'll be talking about all sorts of different things. We're trying something new this week, a full ask me anything if you will uh be before we dive into it there were some unique pieces of star wars news that came out today one unfortunate one really cool let's just uh start off with the main thing here uh shauna trip i can't pronounce her name so i'm very sorry but shauna trip kick uh, costume designer at lucasfilm known for her contributions to star wars the mandalorian book of boba fett and ahsoka unfortunately passed away last week she was also a main contributor on fan favorite cult phenomenon firefly um hey so, yeah uh her contributions uh very very large in the world of star wars television as we have known it for the last five years and super unfortunate to hear of her passing just want to give her her flowers in this moment um and also 
she's a she's a presence on those like Disney gallery episodes when you're seeing the costume design. She's really very easy to pick out. Uh, oh, that's StarWars.com. I think I think out. I might actually know who you're talking about. Now that you yeah, know. I'll, I'll I'll shoot a link into the uh, description of the video for you to see kind of like the StarWars.com remembers type thing. Like it's not exactly her obituary, but you can learn a little more about her career and her contributions to Star Wars. Um, and sad to see her go. So. Big facts. Uh, you know, big facts. Like we as said, an, it takes as a village, an adult. Right? Yeah, it does take a village. As an adult, because uh, you had mentioned Firefly, I've, I saw Serenity like in real time, and I remember enjoying it, but I haven't probably seen it literally since 2000, and, like whenever that came out. Whenever, whenever Serenity came out, maybe, maybe like 05. I don't fucking I know it was a while after the show ended. But I'm, I'm going to rewatch that as an adult. I remember liking it. <laughs> I, I might have I just been young. <laughs> I might get my nerd card taken away. I have actually never seen Firefly. The people really? who like Firefly, Firefly fucking love Firefly, though. Like it is. Not oh yeah, no. It. It's 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 definitely cold fan base, hard body karate. I'm I'm not that deep into it because <laughs> actually this this might get my my nerd card like hole punched. I don't know if it'll be reversed, but I, I watched it backwards. Like I saw Serenity first. And then just because the I series. just because I like sci fi shit and I thought yeah. it looked really cool. So I went and saw it. And then like the super Firefly fans were like gushing about how this was like the love letter because the show never got like a proper ending. And I was like, oh, this was a show. And then they told me about it. And I, f- I fuck with Nathan Fillion. So I was like, he watch Firefly. I was like, oh, hey, this is dope. <laughs> I feel like I have to. And Alex, who and Alex Tudix, that man. Like, Alex yeah. Tudix. I feel like I have to obligatory be like, oh, Nathan Fillion, which is yeah, pretty much, <laughs> which is my uh, um, <laughs> impression of Missy from Big Mouth, which people that if, if Firefly is a cult classic, Big Mouth is something that for some reason the Internet like hates. I, I don't I don't really know why. I, I think I've I'm never met. Any, so I so I'll preference it with a preference. I don't know many people who watched Big Mouth, but everyone I do know that watches Big Mouth loves it. Like I've never heard a negative thing about Big Mouth, which it's weird. It's like I only see people on the internet who are like, "If these are kids, like, yeah, you're I've, talking I've about puberty," commentary. and it's like, "Yeah, that's kind of yeah. the point." Um, My word, like <laughs> we were all out here just humping shit <laughs> in te- <as> teenagers. <laughs> I know I was. <laughs> no, no stuffed animal was safe. <laughs> I was shooting blanks with the best of them. <laughs> 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 fucking fucking up all the school khaki pants like damn it <laughs> again <laughs> somewhere in 2001 towers were falling and i was busting blanks dude That's- <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> no i'm on sick fuck <laughs> yo to- total side tangent because i really want to get into the shit that we want to talk to yeah. I've never because you know in in reference to so we got a lot of love off that uh that reel the Annie are you okay reel about the electric doors <laughs> I got a lot, got a lot of people who enjoyed I mean you that. weren't wrong <laughs> I got a lot of people who enjoyed that but on the same uh ilk of like classic movie tropes that don't make any sense I've never understood like the lotion napkin sock dynamic when it comes to masturbation in like TV and film like what is happening that just seems like such a mess it is like That's like how much. the fuck like like <laughs> not to go too deep into like the human anatomy <laughs> like for all those listeners out there but I feel like cleaning up that with like a napkin is the worst idea <laughs> like you get pieces of napkin stuck everywhere who's who's using a sock and tissues yo like, that doesn't make I, any so, sense I, every time you see a masturbation scene like they grab the lotion they grab the oh sock no you were you are right they, but it's like why grab, is it all there it's like yeah and they grab like an extra contingency yo so i'm so confused like they grab like two three tissues i'm like who's cleaning this up with tissues T- tissues are not pliable them things break so easily very easy <laughs> it's like it's like when you have like a cut on your face from shaving and you like yeah, you stick like the piece of dick. Yeah, that's what I would imagine is happening. Who wants that? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants that? <laughs> like, so and you're confused. listening to Annie. Are you okay? A Star Wars, Star Wars podcast. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Only the, here can you get a fucking jerk off tangent in the range. <laughs> the talking the range. about Star Wars. Hey, that's why we put the not safe for work disclaimer uh, on the tracks. Like big, big you tracks. come here for dick jokes and for Star Wars. I don't know what else you to know. Do. You know, it says advertised. No. One stop shop, baby. <laughs> <One> stop <laughs> All of shop. this is a roundabout way. To be. Shauna, 
Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace. Blessings and prayers to your family. You you are a mensch. You are a dog. Your, your, your outfits are quick, amazing. I, we are we are on like tangent central right now, and then oh, yeah, uh, this will be done. For you saying that you watched Serenity and then went back and watched the show, you Rogue One did. Yeah, you watched Rogue One and and you and you watched Andor. Essentially, okay. <laughs> you know, pre- prequels are all the rage. Yeah, even no one though, can get mad at you for that. Even though okay. Serenity was a sequel, I, I watched Firefly. And Alan Firefly. Tudyk is in Alan Tudyk yeah. is in Rogue One. So the whole the whole cast of uh, Firefly is actually like kind of a a low key who's who of nerdness. I I, I support it. Hey man, I support we'll, it. We'll watch their careers with great interest. <laughs> Over ten, uh, 10, 10 years later, <laughs> sure, maybe longer than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so Firefly was from in 2002 and then serenity came out in 2005 so Jeez. literally almost 15 tw- almost 20 yeah, years later. almost 20 <laughs> years ago Man, that's wild that's you know time is such a crazy thing because like i can vividly remember shit that's like from such a long time ago but it doesn't feel like it was that long ago but then nah. shit that was like a year ago feels, feels like, like a forever, lifetime yeah. ago <laughs> yeah. like the pandemic is like Yo, that is the ultimate example of time is relative because it 1, felt like forever 000. but also flew by so yo facts like when i look back at like you know covid memories it feels like a lifetime ago shit was fucking two years ago <laughs> like, like we just got like, back wow, to, i can't believe that they did that back then and it's like yeah you mean like, yo, you mean like it was crazy like, like, two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, like facts like, facts although like, shit, and, shit and i can't make this suggestion up. anymore but like galaxy <laughs> galaxy's edge during the pandemic was fucking lit there was no lines for shit well, i mean there were still lines but like that was the time to go i'm glad i went twice during the pandemic <laughs> What what a transition! Speaking of things going on at Galaxy's Edge, yeah. Speaking of things going on, it's almost like I planned that. <laughs> you know, I'll be honest though, I didn't. I didn't plan. Look, look, uh, look you, you, all you gotta do is toss it up at the backboard, bro. I'll catch it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Go ahead, fucking oot. Uh, <laughs> so at Galaxy's Edge this uh, week, they debuted functioning BD units. Not exactly the one from like jedi fallen order and survivor but pretty damn close like obviously similar models and they walk around galaxy's edge they obviously have like people who attend to them um so that people aren't just like kick it's kind of like the the robot that like was like traversing the country and then when it got to philly like they destroyed it we we jumped it (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) um no these are being attended to properly at galaxy's edge by disney world disneyland attendants um but they were really cool to see and it's i love that like you know, I've seen functioning droids before, obviously like a labor of love of, of certain cosplayers, but I love that they're starting to incorporate some of that stuff just into the park so that people who go there can oh, yeah. be even more immersed. I mean, that's a big part of the lore. Droids and droids in Star Wars is like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. <laughs> it goes hand in hand. So yeah, have, having that uh live action. I mean, but then it also just reinforces like how we constantly make movies about you know making ai sentient or like digging in the ocean floor and shit always goes bad but then in real life we actually do those things (laughs) like we weren't the ones that created the media that says like hey it's not a bad idea so those those thoughts had to come from somewhere right (laughs) so we just got a room full of writers who were just like yeah you know bad shit happens when we dig too deep on the ground or bad shit happens when we try to make robots too realistic and then what do we do in real life (laughs) (laughs) Uh, what is it life imitates art dude one thousand percent but it but it's i I feel like that's such a dumb saying when like it's fictional art because like you're choosing to make a story about robots rising up which seems mad realistic it makes all the sense in the world as to why that's a terrible idea but then you just go and do it in real life anyway oh yeah we're about three years out from a robot shit. developing feelings if, if that <laughs> if that shit she uh, probably haven't watched it yet but go see she the or creator they. by gareth edwards i'm sure so that amazing <laughs> you this will this will take on a life of its own if we get into that <laughs> don't see that movie <laughs> no don't lie to me was it that bad so i've never so look i won't even say i won't even say it's bad but I will say that I've never left the movie being more confused about my feelings than that. Oh, well, now I kind of want to go see it. No, you're no. Not, I, so, so that's why I'm saying, like, 
go see it because like I want you to like feel my confusion, but like set your expectations extremely extremely low. So I'll, I'll say this. So me and Jordan, shout out to Jordan, went we went and saw it <clears throat> maybe like about a week ago, and uh, my ending synopsis was that it's not a bad movie. It's a bad movie. Like what a movie is supposed to be like beginning, middle, end, pacing, plot, character development. It has none of that. And it makes it you're not invested at all. So it's like the way that a movie is supposed to be made. It's bad. But like the movie itself isn't necessarily a bad movie. Like the act, like the acting's good. John David Washington, love him. The little girl who plays Alfie, she's adorable. the The CGI is great. Like the the set pieces are awesome. The world that they're in is really cool. But like you, you do not get invested in these characters at all. It's super rushed. Like the time skips don't make sense. Like. One one would believe that the main character John David Washington plays in the the robot Alfie. I won't spoil anything for that. <clears throat> like you're supposed to care about them. It's it's typical like enemies become friends, friends become enemies, but we're all richer for the journey. It's supposed yeah, to be yeah. one of those type stories, like buddy <laughs> cop go on an adventure. They make like, it, they make it very apparent in the trailer that it's like yeah he's it's like to be the, conflicted. The, the, so odd maybe couple. the point of the film was to make you conflicted as you go through it but but i would have ex- i would have appreciated that if it was on some like i robot robot bigotry but i fought i learned to love this robot through our bond i'd be rolling it's not that at all it just randomly tries to make you feel like they're super close like the day they met like it's, it's really weird like you just you just go see it because <laughs> like, it's like i i can't explain it but it's like it's very it's the pacing is wildly confusing it's like wildly confusing. <laughs> well i'll let you know what i think maybe we'll update the audience yeah. on my journey no, that's fine. I, I, I would i would absolutely love to do a breakdown of that with you <laughs> <laughs> it was made by gareth edwards it was I would, his, uh, look, we, we can, his we post can, rogue we, one thing and you know me i love it. john david washington so i'm i'm not gonna no i would absolutely yeah it. i love I, I encourage i encourage you to see it but yeah like and you know i'm like a, a cinephile so it's just like it's it, it yeah like my me 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 stammering and trying to like put together a coherent sentence this is how my brain feels about this film like it's very it's very weird it's like it's weird <laughs> it's just it's just well, weird we'll walk from a, a star wars creator and a star wars super fan and john david washington um there we go <laughs> over to some star Look. wars meat from our episode in an it's extended cohesive, edition of ask me a star wars podcast <laughs> It's funny. It's still the, it's, it's not still even questions involved in that right? show. It's like it could be a Jeopardy theme song, but for some reason I picked the prices right, and it just feels like it fits. <laughs> now I'm rolling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How much does this BD droid cost? <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, and then I also get to go. But yeah, so I this is it's a little different, you know. I, I hope to do more of these as we move forward, and, and we put the call out there, and we were we got a resounding a bit of silence. So, <laughs> uh, Matt, I was and super I excited. Our, I was about to say, "Oh, resounding answers!" I was. No, <laughs> so we have our own questions for yeah, each other. Hell yeah! Hell and yeah. I encourage anyone who listens now or in the future to send a, at any are you okay pod on Instagram, uh, you know hit me up on twitter you can you can email us at annie or yoke pod at gmail.com if you really want to slide, uh, slide in the dms slide into my one. dms slide into matt's right. dms send, send them questions there uh and we'll answer them here but we have Absolutely. some some fun questions to ask each other and uh, if you don't mind i'll go first and then, and please then we'll do. get please get do. to yours and so uh my question for this segment of ask me anything a star is, wars podcast if you could take someone who has already been cast in star wars and cast them as someone else who would you choose and what character would you have them portray so just an example for you um like if you said i want mark hamill who was cast as luke to be playing darth sidious and, and why that was yeah. just a throwaway example but no, absolutely so you go ahead absolutely. and give me your answer friend yeah so i came up with two answers because 
my who I would recast them is a bit open ended. It's not like a specific person. Okay. Like the who and what I would want them to be is, but like I didn't put I didn't go like, oh, Mark Hamill play Han Solo. Like I didn't do that. So I'll roll with you. <clears throat> so first character, I would take the legendary, lovely, incomparable Ming Na Wen who is known as Fennec Shan from Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian. And I would love for her to be a Jedi. I think that seeing her cook with some lightsabers would be amazing. If I had to put a specific Jedi really randomly, I don't know her name. So I know you got me and she hasn't really been like a fixture in live action Star Wars, but I feel like if she was, that'd be dope. Um, Kanan's master. Oh, Depa Balaba. Yeah. I don't know why. I just feel like Ming-Na Wen would like really body that. Well, just her as a Jedi in general, I would have really liked <clears throat> to have seen her uh, teaching some younglings or being one with the Force. She's uh, she's very stoic. Like, she's very stoic and wise, especially like if her, her Melinda May character from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that I'm still waiting for them to bring her into the live action MCU. Her and Coulson and Quake. Still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> and Mac with his shotgun axe. I would love to see that in the movies as well. And uh, my second answer, again, not necessarily a specific landing, but Stellan Skarsgård. Can't remember his his character's name in Andor. I, it's in I my brain just somewhere. just rewatched it, and it's killing me that I'm blank. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't want to like, look I'm it really up, so I'm going myself. to. I'm going to. Like, I literally... I can't believe it. I fucking... <clears throat> can't remember his name i actually was it's funny i was literally saying to myself like last night and or this morning uh, <laughs> and <I was> or <laughs> double on times don't ask me how i uh was literally fucking saying, luthan rail jesus luthan, yes i was saying to myself that i was gonna i, I think i wanted to rewatch andor because i liked it so much um i would love to see stellan skarsgård as a sith not necessarily maybe not sidious i feel like dooku had i feel like i like uh christopher lee as dooku i feel like that's kind of like locked in for him but some type of sith lord uh like i said that it could be on some like knights of the old republic doesn't necessarily have to be like a sith that we've actively seen but uh i would say same like my ming na wen answer is uh his them scars guards just play evil really well they do play <laughs> like, really well i actually think that luthan is going to be revealed to be a jedi in andor season ooh. two i have a hunch that that's gonna happen um and don't get me wrong, not a Sith, uh, but, and I'm not, this is not me, like, being like, oh, they should replace fucking uh, Ray Stevenson with him, but I think that he would also body Balin. If he, oh, like, yeah, that would have been, that would have been nice. If he worked out a bit and, like, got himself, uh, you know, I think he could do that, that role really well. Obviously, I don't, I don't think his, the, I don't think the Scars guards can grow facial hair. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I, don't think I, I mean, you'd have to like rethink the character, but like someone in that vein of things, someone who's like disenfranchised from the yeah, Jedi. Yeah. I like that. I like um, but that still a lot. force user, I think makes a lot of sense. And I hope, I hope his character takes that kind of turn in Andor. Back to your Ming-Na Wen point. Oh, um, ooh, hers like a side ventress might be fire. Like maybe yeah. like to go yeah. Sith side of it. But like, May, may so maybe not necessarily a Jedi. I'm I'm skewing more towards you're Jedi. One, you want to see Ming Na Wen like be in her action element, and we got kind of. They did a really good job in the. Oh like, yeah, Finnick Shan. I love Finnick Shan. Yeah, <laughs> I was showing her, but like in the Book of Boba Fett, she kind of got the shaft. Like, <clears throat> a little bit. Um, in the whole final bit. battle episode where they could have had her shine. Oh, oh yeah, like, when she disappeared. <laughs> yeah, she disappears for the whole episode to and go assassinate up, like, the, the the people. <laughs> the, right, the I'm not saying that's not in character, but it's like right. have her do something else, please. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but but <laughs> I, I I like that. I think yeah, like if if not maybe not if not Jedi Seth, then maybe just like Force user just to like have her in her action element, and I would love to see her like wielding a lightsaber if, like that would. Yeah. Uh, no, like I think that'd be really cool. Right I think the only, my only apprehension against the casting of Devin Balab is that that would be the second time that you take uh, an Indian actress and <laughs> and give it to an Asian character. Ah, uh, like, good point. <laughs> um, not that there should be more Indian and Asian representation in Star Wars. I definitely think that uh, there's room for, you know, those characters to be involved in things for sure. Um, but yeah, with the TSR car getting not getting Sabine as a, like a live action role. I know she's a little bitter about that, but yeah. uh, not that Natasha didn't do a good job. I, I liked her performance. Gotcha. Um, well, well to, for, to, I guess you wouldn't really call it 
whitewashing because maybe not isn't white but to to keep the ethnicity of that character intact then i'll double down on my size ventress casting then i think ming would body that yeah for guys, sure. i think that would be like super fire and uh she kind of in, in the most respectful way possible she kind of i feel like she'd be able to pull off that gravelly voice well like aside just like voice like the kind of yeah I feel like she'd I, be I able can to, see it. I can see it. Yeah, I feel like she'd be able to get because she kind of has like a deeper, <clears throat> deeper voice. But yeah, I think that'd be dope. And her her double lightsaber action. Oh <laughs> twice, yeah, twice twice as good. Kill it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's that's Mulan, bro. Like, Mulan. She, she she gonna cook. She could cook with oh, lightsabers. <laughs> like, let her let movie spin. Let movie spin. But yes, yeah, St- Stellan Skarsgård as yeah a Sith. I would fuck with. But if he if he pops up as a Jedi, I wouldn't be mad at that at all. I think that'd be a a nice pleasant change because you know he kind of i feel like if he would have pop up as a sith that'd be like low-hanging fruit like oh of course he was a sith because he like wears black all the time and like does shady backhanded shit in the back room of his art (laughs) depot and stuff so like that would be like oh all right cool of course so his there's two instances that actually make me feel like he's a jedi and i don't when when he confronts saw the second time and he kind of throws two tubes under the bus and he's like tubes is your is my informant are you kidding (laughs) tubes was like the fuck yeah (laughs) um that (laughs) they take his like staff away from him and the end of it looks like a lightsaber handle in my opinion Mm. um but it's and as obviously a visual like representation of him potentially being a jedi that's not the thing that actually pushed me over it's actually his monologue when they're on the lower levels of coruscant and he's talking love to that. the isb guy love that and he's speech. like i burned i think he says i burned my or i like fight for a cause or a burning like sunset that i'll never see or something like that and he's i have to resort to the tools of my enemy to yeah, yeah, I think he sent, he sent just says I have to resort to using the tools of my enemy to see a sun rise that I'll that that will I'll never see, or for a sunrise to rise that I'll never see essentially. And it's like I think that he's saying there that he's compromising all of his morals as a Jedi to mm. dig deeper and do the dark things that are necessary to be done within this rebellion in order for them to fight back against the Empire. Um, so that was a big point for me that I was like that really stuck in my head and I was like what does he mean like it's one thing to be moral it's another to be as capable as he is god you know what no, I, mean? I like I like that I like that and, and that was probably one of the best scenes like in that whole series that little speech I, there are three different actors in that show that should have gotten um best supporting actor nods at the Emmys and the fact that they didn't like makes me so fucking mad yeah that's that's always been like a gripe of mine and i can't remember someone else um had a similar take on this like how like whether it's like the the emmys or the sag awards or the oscars like how they kind of like turn their noses up at like summer yeah. blockbuster type films and, yeah, yeah like sign year or like superhero movies or what like that but i remember it, w- it was either it wasn't Black Panther because I remember mo- like that did get nominated. It might have been. It was either Endgame or No Way Home, and like it was like a, a, a reputable actor because I, I believe I, I do know for a fact Mike Martin Scorsese did come out and kind of like bashed MCU movies like oh they're just yeah. popcorn films they shouldn't this isn't true cinema but but amusement they, park they, they, rides yeah, yeah, exa- yeah. exactly and I remember I can't remember who it was but it was either, it was either after Endgame came out or like No Way Home but they were basically saying like yo these are like fire movies <laughs> like, like these like took like people took their time and money to like make these like people like put their foot in like especially like it, it might have been end game i don't remember it's definitely either end game or no way home doesn't matter but um but it was essentially like yo like this was a moment especially end game like especially for the people who had like invested that much time like yeah. into like the mcu up until that point even though i know it's like still going but that was like a really big bookend moment so to like have that movie played out the way it was and like receive the reception it is and get like the adulation and acclaim and you know the the box office records and stuff for people to be like come on bro like y'all be y'all be shafting these like legit good movies and trying to like 
oh, we'll we'll throw them in for like best special CGI, effects, which yeah, is good. special it effects. Is, I mean, <laughs> it's funny how much it fell off after like Endgame, but right. It, also, <laughs> it is funny to hear like I think Robert Downey Jr. after like or like during the like Oppenheimer like press stuff like right before. I think he was like on record saying that he was worried that acting in the MCU forced him to like think that he wasn't like living up to I guess like his proper acting chops. Mm. And I think that's so wild to say. His career, yeah. <laughs> so wild to say. Um, if he was like saying that after like Homecoming, I could see it. But like his performance in Endgame is ridiculously genuine and in character. That's what I'm saying, bro. Um, like, I, I just like it sticks in my head. Like when he comes back from space, and they're all talking to him, and he like has that moment. That he's like, I lost, like, I lost the kid. <laughs> yeah, like, and and then that whole thing where he's like, we should have fought together. Yeah, like, yeah. He's like, yeah. you said you'd be there. You, yeah, and you weren't. Like, right, right. Liar. Like, you said that to me is lose. fucking fantastic scene. <laughs> Uh, yeah. acted by him so I think it's like wild that I, I'm not saying that he should have gotten an Oscar for that but it's like let's let's not just chalk all of these movies up to just a fun amusement park ride like yeah. some not, of the not, some of the best actors of our time are like they they show up in other movies and like if anything you get you cast one of those people and because then, of the MCU yeah because of, <laughs> yeah because of the MCU and you cast those people and then they make your movie into a wilder success than you could imagine I'm sure not that many people would have uh, watched The Devil All the Time on Netflix if it oh, wasn't yeah. for Tom Holland and Robert Pattinson. 1,000% one thousand percent one of two people who've been in massive off. franchises. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely and I'm not even talking about Batman. I'm talking about like Twilight. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. nah, I'm rolling. Yeah, I was with you. Uh, I'm a Twilight fan, bro. <laughs> hey, Robert Pattinson, <laughs> that's my that's my guy. <laughs> like, I love me some R. Pat. That's my dude. Yeah, but he, no, but I, both I, of them I absolutely fucking... So another Skarsgård brother is in that movie too. And they yeah, fucking, buddy. Them damn Killed scars them. guards, <laughs> but yeah, but that's that's a, that's a really good point, especially like kind of what you're saying. That's hard for me to accept that from like Robert Downey Jr. specifically because the MCU literally saved his career. It, like yeah, after after like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, like my man's wasn't doing shit. Like he was kind of persona non grata, and that's like self admitted himself. Like he was just like, yeah, like no one wanted to touch me because like all my issues and stuff. You know, he got clean. You know, blessings and you know prayers for that and everything. But just like John Favreau took a chance on him. Like a lot of people weren't like behind closed doors were like, Ugh, Robert Downey Jr. You sure? <laughs> bit of a loose cannon he ain't really done much like i don't know if that's the marquee name you want to try to launch like this franchise and look my man's like god now god level in terms of like nerd culture and just movie culture now like the mcu did that like so if anything and he, he was phenomenal in oppenheimer like I'm absolutely, gonna, absolutely i think he's gonna be great in several movies down the line you know i'm sure but i just would say it's just weird for him to be like i was worried it was making me a worse actor yeah, and it's I'm like not. maybe it's like the quippiness of those movies, but like there are serious moments that he handled very, very well, especially in Infinity War and especially in Endgame. But absolutely, even uh, Civil hey, War, like that was yeah. less, True. less com- yeah. comedic. I mean, people say that every time they watch the movie, it's like gets worse, and I'm like, are you kidding me? The twist hurts me every <laughs> every time. <laughs> like, yeah, I never, I never under like I don't get the. I mean, so I get the Civil War hate from the aspect of like comic book pure purist that is nowhere war. close to the actual civil war <laughs> like the like i mean like that you, was the movie that officially was like get over it like they don't have to do anything they're playing in a different universe it was like yeah they, like you know like you, they can't do infinity war without adam warlock yes yes they can probably, and they like, did. let's say they did civil war without <laughs> mr fantastic and he was exactly. like literally the one that helped build the prison <laughs> like, yeah well dude one of my favorite scenes in like comic book history is from that thing and i'm i love that movie civil war is like definitely in my oh, yeah. it's if oh, it's yeah. not my number one it's probably my number two um yeah i'll say civil wars if it, if it, if not i i'd have to like rethink my list because more shit has come out not that any of the new shit is like oh yeah definitely cracking but civil wars definitely if, if not my five one thousand percent my ten my top 10. yeah uh there's a scene from the comic book run where uh spidey switches sides obviously mm-hmm and they're fighting and spider-man is, is fighting against mr fantastic and he does something and he goes mr fantastic goes amazing and spider-man punches him in the face and he's like spectacular 
<laughs> <laughs> that shit, I was like, this is so meta, but this is fucking, I was like, when I was 14 reading that, I got hard, I think. <laughs> I love Pause. that. <laughs> Matt, was, Matt was like, I can't believe you just said that. I mean, it went, went, went back to our, our masturbation tangent. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I'm, uh, look, I'm here, bro. Look, <laughs> I'm here for all the rigmarole. Uh, but, so um, I'll, let me give you my answer to my question. I was just um, about to say, do you have an answer to your I own do, question? I do. And you actually inspired me to add a second one in based hey. off of yours. Like This is on the spot right now. So we'll, let's, let's, let's get this one out of the way. Let's get it. I love Donald Glover as Lando. Mm. That's my guy. However, I think Donald Glover as his own Star Wars character would have been probably better. Because then we wouldn't have had to like fit it into a timeline. We could have done whatever we fucking wanted with him, and he could have had an opportunity to make probably the best Star Wars movie ever. Because you know that man would also be writing it. Uh, jury's still out on whether Lando is happening. I know that there's been talks recently about how he's writing it with his brother, and I hope nothing for the best. But I do kind of think that it, like it kind of blows that he's stuck in that role and can't do, I guess, other roles in Star Wars. Um, I feel that. I feel that. So I, I do. It's not nothing. No hate against him being cast as Lando. Um, I just kind of wish that there was more opportunity for stories to be told with him in like different portions of the timeline. And I, I have a lot of original trilogy fatigue. So I'm kind of like hoping that they they do start doing more stuff outside of that. And if that was the case, then we will not be getting a lot of Donald Glover. So do you? So I guess before you give me your next one, if not, because I know you were saying just like his own character, do you know or do you think you have an idea of like what property you would have wanted him to show up? If you don't have like the specific character, because maybe he'd be like original content, do you know like where you would have wanted to see him? Yeah, so I think that um, he can fit a smuggler archetype, but I would actually rather see him be kind of like... um, maybe like a code breaker like oh so type replace, thing where he's replace like, benicio del toro essentially like he's a splicer I... like he's act, he's running heists like they need to go to him in order to get um like into places to like run heists like that and like oh he's that. he's the specialist essentially but it would be really cool if there was like a a darker edge to him and that he kind of had like i'm kind of envisioning like the weapon set of uh bill burr's character with like the shoulder pistol Mm. Um, okay. But like with a few extra that. things, and like I guess like the technical savvy of tech from Bad Batch mixed with uh, Mayfeld's kind of like armory, but with its his own set of kind of like personality traits that I think Donald Glover could do really well. Yeah. I could definitely see him I, with like a a a, a, a Monopoly style oculus like over one eye like that he I needs do like that. Yeah. i could definitely see him with that <laughs> that he flips down every now and again and he needs yeah 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 kind of like yeah. how like boba fett has the well all the exactly. Mandalor- most a lot of mandalorians exactly have, have them but the exactly exactly yeah or like, no, also like, or like how like babu frick has like his oculus things that he adjusts <laughs> yeah. and puts down yeah like i know i know it'd be super low-hanging fruit because it kind of would just be like too on the nose of what he's already done but i feel like he'd have been real good in uh in Andor and like the prison yeah. break scenes. Like I could have seen him like being uh taking the place of like Andor's right hand man that like uh is in the show. Whose name yeah. I can't remember. But like the guy that he broke out with and So like, the guy he breaks out with is actually in Rogue One. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. Same no, thing. No, that's I, like his I, man's I that's like his right hand man's yeah. Right. <clears throat> but I could have seen him I know, but that's that's basically the same exact role as him playing Lando in solo, which is like probably why Kinda. I can see such a smooth transition. But I I, I kind of like along the lines of what you were saying, same vibe, but it, it could have been someone who's not like a pre-established character to like let him flourish, do some other things. So like, cause like you said, I, I actually really like that, uh, that point that making him Lando, you kind of like boxed him into being Lando. <laughs> he yeah. can't, he, yeah. he can't do shit else. <laughs> right. <laughs> can't uh, do nothing else. F- funnily enough, my, my actual answer that I did not come up with on the spot is another actor from Solo. Um, listen I love Hayden Christensen but there's something about Alden Ehrenreich and the way he plays Han Solo in Solo that reminds me a lot of Clone Wars Anakin ooh the hair 
<laughs> yeah, it might be the hair. <laughs> but the attitude, too, is kind of there. I'm, not, I'm like, not mad at that. I'm not mad I at that I think he'd all. be a great Anakin Skywalker. Like, let's say the prequels weren't made, and, like, you decided to do something with a younger actor, and then you age him up. I think they purposely tried to make him look like Solo, but I think that they could have also um, had him be a, a nice Anakin. Um, and I just, I just, I don't know what it is. I think it's, like, there's something about that movie that is really fun in a way that like I don't even like Han Solo that much as a character like don't get me wrong Han Solo is a great character it's just like I tend to like Jedi and like those are like my favorite characters mm. um, so like those are the ones I, I think I resonate with the most obviously that's why I like Ezra so much um, but he just feels like he was like he could hit those things and I'm just waiting for him to show me something that it's like he could also do the dark side aspect yeah. you know you know what I think it is yo like honestly because it's funny, like, as you're saying it, for some reason, I, like, as soon as you said it, I started seeing it, too. Weirdly, I think it's the eyebrows. Because, like, <laughs> animated, yeah. animated Air- Anakin, like, Clone Wars Anakin, the animated series, has, like, really prominent eyebrows. But, yeah. like, Hayden Christensen has, like, just kind of eyebrows like just like right mm-hmm. like kind of like standard you know regular well-kept eyebrows but like the actor who plays solo whose name i don't remember he like he like his eyebrows are kind of like his distinguishing feature like they're kind of like very specific like <laughs> like like tom holland like has very specific eyebrows yeah. <laughs> like like so was, i feel like it's that like like because i like as you're saying i could say i was like he definitely would have been like a really dope live action clone war era Anakin, I don't, I don't roll with that. I'm rolling. I fuck with it. Well, we've gotten through my question, so I'm going to give the yes. floor to you, Rogue One. Check in Durr. and give me your question. I got you, good buddy. So, as soon as you told me that you wanted to kind of do these uh, us asking each other anything questions, I was just like, oh man, I'm gonna have to think about a question. But then, literally, in that same conversation, I was like, wait, I got it, because you know. You are Darth Plagueis the Wise, the human holocron himself. You know, all things Star Wars is your your uh, kit and caboodle, your niche, you know, from soup to potatoes. You know it all. So my question for you. You do know quite a bit. Yeah, you do know quite a bit. (laughs) My uh, talk your shit, King. (laughs) My question for you would be good, buddy. If you could take one canon Star Wars event, preferably a big one, and replace it with one non-canon event what would you swap and why okay i hope this is big enough for you i'm rolling let's do and it. it would change quite a few things actually I love, i'm I, excited I think. i'm excited <laughs> are you familiar with the 2003 with the story Andy of Darth Plagueis the wise animated clone wars <laughs> the uh the 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 cartoon one, Jack, right? yes the cartoon one yeah yeah hell yeah i love them things General Grievous in that series, to me, is one of the most menacing, badass, cold, like, villains in all of Star Wars. Those are on Disney Plus, I believe. They actually. are on Disney Plus. I if highly anyone, recommend you watch them. If, you if anyone seen hasn't seen them, yes, they are amazing. And he doesn't show up until, like, the end of the first volume. But his, it was, I just remember, that was how they introduced him, like, period. Mm-hmm. And it was just, like, one of those things I was like, this is fucking incredible. And then you go all the way through the Battle of Coruscant, and he abducts Palpatine, and it's supposed to lead right into Revenge of the Sith. And I am fine, canon-wise, with what they did in the 2008 Clone Wars series. Um, like, all that, Ahsoka wouldn't exist without it. Like, we need... I think the canon version of those that timeline events is fine. My gripe with it is that they did such a good job in 2003 of making Grievous a serious bad guy... And, like, they even show why he's, like, coughing because Mace Windu, like, crushes his lungs at the end of Volume 2. And it's like, oh, my God, this dude is fucking, like, savage. And they turned him into a complete joke in the other Clone Wars and, like, made the coughing and, like, you know, like, I guess, like, all that stuff part of canon. Like, there's no, there was no reason behind it. Whereas, like, in Legends, in that Gendy Tartakovsky 2003 Clone Wars series, Mace Windu was responsible for creating uh, like 
the problem with his lungs and stuff like that. So I would change that portion of the timeline and like be like, let's go back to the original idea there and maybe not have General Grievous be so much of a bitch and have him kill more than like two Jedi throughout the entire Clone Wars. <laughs> God, so you he has a collection of lightsabers and I think we like in total see him kill. It might only be one Jedi, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> right. Guys, so, so you would swap out the Grievous that we got for the Grievous that we deserved. Yes, that is gotcha. that is the change that I would make. Um, I like so it. I have some honorable mentions before you get in tears yeah. real quick. Oh, no, it's good. Um, and I just want to make it very clear. I don't have a problem with canon, but if you played the original Battlefront 2, there's this like awesome story mode where you play as the 501st, and it's narrated by Tamora Morrison. Oh, and essentially, like in that storyline, the clones knew that they were going to betray the Jedi the whole time, and I think that's super oh, fucked shit. up. That's fine, um, and an interesting like story point. I still think it's better in canon, but I really like was fighting with myself. I was like, I don't know, that was pretty dark too. Like, <laughs> this is great. Um, and then I think another like video game uh, moment that I just wish was <coughs> canonized. Uh, would be just the it's hard to let me I just want Star Killer to find a way into Canada. <laughs> no, I'm, really I'm saying um, <laughs> I've be, I've beat that drum before. Yeah, I don't need him to be like the super overpowered person. I just I think Sam Witwer is a great actor. Right. And I totally, totally get everyone's gripes where they're like, oh, it's like the force doesn't work like this. I know the force does not work like that. It's not a video game. I get it. But I still think he could body some version of that character in the Star Wars timeline. Like, I think it would be really fun to see it just find its way in there. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. But how about you, man? What would you choose? So, so I don't know if... So, one, I'm not 100% sure if it's canonized or if it's legend. Those Obi-Wan books, like the prequel stuff where it's like showing his formative layers, is that like legend stuff or that's like canon stuff? Uh, depends on what series. There's ah, okay. a book called Master and Apprentice that came out, um, like within the last five years, that detail him and Qui Gon's relationship a bit more. That is canon. Uh, gotcha. I do believe that there's a whole series of books that have Obi Wan as a younger bad one that are legends. Yeah, those are the ones that I probably remember, like from like middle school book sale shit <laughs> and all that stuff. But um, so that that's my honorable mention. My first one is not necessarily uncanny. So it's definitely not canon, but it's not not canon. <laughs> like, it's like it's, it's your head canon because it's not confirmed or denied. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I love the fan theory that Mace Windu is actually the chosen one or was supposed to be the chosen one. And that was like a big reason because it makes him not liking anakin make more sense i like i do also love this theory yeah I, i've always been a really big fan and then even with like the explanation as to why his lightsaber is purple because like oh it's red and blue kyber crystal shit because he can use the dark side and the light or at least fighting wise he's real good at uh like deflecting like dark side like from his form style but yeah I've his always... his lightsaber like form style i guess like taps into uh anger like has an emotion and, like, right Jedi exactly. are not supposed and, to and... do that so it's very like difficult and then, for like them to fan it. fan cast fan theory again why is why he was able to like fight Sidious's lightning because like he's able to like can not control or use the dark side but part of you know like his training and form style and like his lightsaber it's just like it's he basically kind of dabbled to be to be able to be a better defender against the dark arts he kind of like leaned into it a bit fan theory wise they've never like said this like actual like a star wars lore but that the whole fan theory about him being the actual chosen one or was suspected to be the chosen one until anakin popped up and that was a big reason why he had so much resentment towards him it was just like oh i don't want him to be a jedi or even after he came it's like oh like you're on this council but we don't grant you the rank of master it was just like it was like professional jealousy to an right. extent yeah it right. feels it feels kind of like even with the Clone Wars' this context it almost feels out of place. Yeah, no, it's so random. Like yeah. like without 
if with, without that fan theory either a being confirmed or b like there being some other underlying tension that maybe they can explore in a prequel series down the road you know a lot of people think that mace isn't dead which i would love for him not to be dead i think that'd be dope but yeah like you were just saying like even with clone wars the only gripe that he seems to have is that he was one of the ones that was just like yeah no he shouldn't be trained and obi-wan did it anyway (laughs) like it seems like that's his only issue like oh you were too old to even start training but you know obi-wan went against the order for qui-gon and you ain't really supposed to be here so meh which is just like well then your beef should be with obi-wan like obi's like one of your most trusted confidants and he went against you (laughs) like that's like one of your man's men, especially episode three. Y'all talk a lot. <laughs> Y'all stay on like war councils together. So I was like, I really would love for that to be uh canon or at least like to get like a oh hmm, I like you know you know like how when like, fans come up like really good theories and like writers and like want to be it. like Yeah, so they'll <laughs> take it but they won't say they're taking it, they'll be like, hmm, I like yeah, that. Like, like Peter like, Parker <laughs> is the guy that Iron Man saves. And yes, in the it. first movie, yeah. like that was totally fans did that and, and fucking Kevin Feige definitely jumped in front of that bullet. <laughs> He's like, Oh yeah, I've always I always meant for that to be Peter Parker. I, I'm glad you guys caught that. Like, man, you didn't fucking mean for that to be like that. <laughs> Don't you lie to me. <laughs> but yeah, no, shit exactly that's a perfect example exactly like that but yeah that would be my main one for that fan theory to have mace be the actual chosen one or was thought to be the chosen one pre-anakin and that's the reason for the resentment and then b i really liked the the lead again i i'm a little blurry on like which obi-wan prequel stuff was legends versus what wasn't but i i think based off your description the stuff that i read when i was younger was definitely legend stuff and i always liked it because <clears throat> I've, I've always said like i re- so i love ewan mcgregor as an actor like i think that he was perfectly casted as obi-wan like like his his transition into what would then become alex guinness's portrayal i feel like he did an amazing job but like obi-wan kind of is just like if if you really break it down if you take away the obi-wan series which helped give him some substance like if you really look at him in new hope and even in the prequels he's kind of just there like qui-gon drives the story forward in phantom menace anakin i would say anakin slash padme drive the story forward in attack of the clones or now nah, maybe 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 like the clone war it's like the war itself was kind of like the shit that moved everything forward like dooku was a big player in it like even though obi-wan was like doing like investigative shit like if you if if you take obi-wan out of star wars like a lot of star wars still happens if that makes sense yeah <clears throat> no i hear where you're coming from and, and i think um I think that there's so many moving parts that it's like some some of his. It, I I think a lot of the I guess like conflict I guess for Obi Wan is that he reluctantly becomes a dad when he should have reluctantly became an older brother. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. And he like forces himself to be this like bastion of maturity when he's <laughs> hardly mature himself in the Phantom Menace. I love um, that. But so she, 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 like what you just said, like shit like that, like. I would have liked that that was kind of played into more than just us as smart fans putting it together. Because, like, if you, I, one thing that I did notice that I wouldn't say it bothered me, but it was, like, noticeable, like, in Clone Wars, and if it was intentional, then fine. But in Clone Wars, Anakin often not often but anytime it was like right like he revered obi-wan as like a father he even said he's the closest thing to a father i've had he even Mm -hmm. says that line in the movie but then return of the jedi it's only brother talk it's all you're my brother oh my brother it's it's all like sibling and it's even sibling energy so it's just like whether that was like a character choice that they chose to make like oh yeah you know what because we're getting so close to you know new hope and y'all are essentially like the same age in New Hope. I guess we can't really lean into the father son shit 
anymore or whatever but like i've always felt like what you were saying and i know a lot of people are saying that uh a lot of fans are saying that that is a big part of like anakin's downfall it's like he needed the father like he needed quite yeah i mean that we, Dave we, has gone we've talked record. about this yeah said that yeah. like Qui-Gon the duel of the fates is like duel of the fates is like a double meaning like this is like oh shit like if Qui-Gon dies then it's like that's bad because that's who Anakin needed like he needed Qui-Gon to be who we were supposed to be like a a, a much more hipster off kilter Jedi who was like oh yeah not really you know Qui-Gon was a rule breaker and he was, a, he was a bit of a shit starter. Yeah. Like, I mean, which I, is what I, Anakin was. I don't know if I mean, you're probably not going to disagree with this, but I, I do feel like, and this is exemplified pretty well in the Clone Wars, uh, but really the prequel trilogy as a whole. But I feel like Obi-Wan's purpose in the story is to show you what a real Jedi should be. Oh, I like that. Because he never falters. Right. And yet for he's good, training for better someone. For better or for worse. Right. right. He's training someone who falters to fault right nah, but is like more that. powerful than anyone could possibly imagine so it's like it is a good character like dichotomy but to your point they have not really fleshed out that time period in between the phantom menace and attack of the clones well enough for us to get those vital obi-wan stories that make it feel more real because in the clone wars they are acting as brothers most of the time yeah. there's that maturity switch when anakin becomes a knight obi-wan says i'm gonna I'm obviously going to remain your master, and, and Anakin still calls him his master out of respect, uh, as a lot of Jedi do to the like older Jedi who've trained knights and so on and so on. But there's a level of respect that they kind of like hold to each other, and they're more, um, I guess, like, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Other than brothers, I'm just trying to say that they're like on the sim- a similar playing field. They're, they're peers. They're peers. Yeah. yeah they're, Instead they're of peers. a peer mentor. Type yeah. Thing. But you actually just said something that like fucked me up. And I'm really happy you said it. Cause like, I've always felt this way, but I never could like f- put words to it. Uh, you actually perfectly summed up my issue with like Obi-Wan. So I love your point about Obi-Wan's point is to show like how Anakin was a faulty Jedi. Jet, well, why do I, why do I enunciate like that? Jedi, 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 <laughs> not from a Jedi. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, Obi Wan's point was to yeah show like Anakin's faults and flaws and how he was like off the beaten path by having him stand next to somebody who's like textbook Jedi. Like, maybe not necessarily super into the dogma but in terms of like job description like all right this is what i do this is what i don't do this is what i'm supposed to do i might not be happy about it but i'm gonna keep my head down and go through it so what you just said that just switched the light bulb into my head in phantom menace again qui-gon being a shit starter and going against the council and obi-wan even makes reference to it like oh yeah like master this is why they won't give you a seat on the council because you be on your own shit they don't never show Obi-Wan having an issue with Qui-Gon breaking the rules. Like, he might say something, but he'll still go along and do it. I feel like had they showed, kind of like how they did with Shin and Balin. Like, Balin would say some shit, and Shin would be like, the fuck? Like, what you mean? <laughs> like, I don't like that, boss, but okay. I feel like had they showed more of how militant and by the book obi-wan was as a student it would have played way better with why he was so hard on anakin as a teacher but it's just like all they show you is like qui-gon wants to go off the book obi-wan's like master that's not a good idea but let's do it so it's like it makes you think that obi-wan is also a bit of a rebel so then like when he's training anakin and anakin's trying to do rebellious shit and Obi Wan's just like, nah, bro, chill out. It's like, wait, you was just doing rebellious shit with your with your master. Like, come on, hypocrite. I mean, I guess being hypocrite is part of being a Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it's like, it's so. I mean, you you you're making good points. It's just like you can't cover it in three movies, right? Right. Like they have Georgia to pick and choose his battles, and you know now that Disney bought things, like obviously Canada has rearranged. But I'm open for all of this storytelling around. Obi Wan, because um, yeah. Favreau, I feel like I feel like Favreau did such a good job with Shin and Balin, with showing that dynamic that sometimes it is just blind loyalty 
and the Padawan doesn't trust us. Yeah, trusting your master too. You know, yeah. you've been through enough that it's like, okay, I'm gonna follow your lead, even even if I'm not totally on board. Like, I still trust you. Yeah. But um, even even that, I would have been rolled with. Like, they don't. And and again, because I know, like, because of uh, like you just said, it's a it's a two hour plus movie. You and McGregor at that time wasn't even really like a big household name, so they're not gonna like put too much of the plot on him. Like that's obvious. So it was like even just kind of like a more of a of an intentional a line here or a line there or a look of when Qui-Gon would want to do his own thing. Again, like I said, Obi had, oh, I don't think this was a good idea. He he would have that. Or like they had the conversation, oh, this is why you won't be on the council. But it it never really felt like Oh yeah, hey master. I don't know if we should be do this. I don't know if the count. I don't know if this is what it. Just, it wasn't like, it wasn't doubt. It was just like reluctance. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Like it wasn't like, oh, I want to be a by the book Jedi. I want to do this the way that it's supposed to be done to go with the the Plo Koons and the Mace Windus and the Yodas of the world. Like just kind of be like a, a a beacon of hope, a paragon of wisdom, if you will. And Cly guys was like, yeah, like, no, it's not all black and white. There's a little bit of gray in there. Dooku was the same. Like they were saying, like, oh, you come from a lineage. Like, you know, <laughs> like off the, off the beat. Jedi. Yeah, unconventional yeah. Jedi. So it's just like I I love that I love that acknowledgement that Ahsoka comes from like unconventional Jedi, but I feel like it's not until the Obi Wan series that you get to see that Obi Wan can be unconventional in his own way, yeah. like like when push comes to shove, or like and obviously there is no more order come Obi Wan, so it's like kind of like a cop out. But it's again, easier for him, right? He doesn't have exa- to worry exa- about like exactly. he's not even trying to be a Jedi. He, in fact, exactly. he's actively avoiding it. <laughs> one thousand percent. But yeah, so just just not not to like harp on it too much. But yeah, like just just some more like visual representation of like the fact that Obi Wan is by the book and Qui Gon wasn't and Anakin wasn't, but he was, and that is like a big reason why they butted heads because it just like Clone Wars for me just seemed like Anakin had horny teen angst like it just it didn't like I've 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 watched Clone Wars thousands of times hundreds you mean of times Attack of the dozens clones, of, yeah I'm sorry Attack of the Clones my, I'm, my apologies yeah. when you said horny I was like mm, I think he means Attack of the Clones <laughs> yeah yeah 1000% 1000% and, and Attack of the Clones like I don't feel like the 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 tension between Obi Wan and Anakin, I feel like, could have been so much better served up. And I know Clone Wars helps a lot because you see like them button heads or like when Obi Wan, Obi Wan faking his death really fucked Anakin up a lot. Like that you that was like a big turning point and like hmm damn I thought I trusted you wholeheartedly but I don't know anymore. Like that was like a big turning point. But there wasn't shit like had that not existed. There's nothing in the movie that kind of like for me leads to that right like no no it's also it's like it's kind of why i consider it like uh it's not just recommended viewing it's like required viewing yeah at this you, point. if you, you want like you, the full you story have to. and you like have to. like um just to kind of we're on a kind of like a a, a big talking point <laughs> here so we'll, just, <laughs> Somehow keep, got we'll here. just keep it flowing um <laughs> but like it shows uh, obi-wan faces a lot of the same struggles that anakin faces but he you only see it in the clone wars so like right uh you see obi-wan lose someone that he loves in satine mm-hmm. and he doesn't turn because of it you know obviously in the moment he's upset and he's he's a little bit distraught but he doesn't let it break him you know and that's just who obi-wan is the like I don't even put this. Obi Wan is like the flex seal of the Star Wars galaxy. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> there, everyone has holes, but you put that shit over top of it, and nothing's getting through. And that's how that's how the darkness is like for Obi Wan. It just it cannot break through for him. Like no matter how many difficult things he faces, he still never allows it to uh, make him become a worse person. Does he maybe take? a mental health break <laughs> after Re- revenge of the Sith. Sure. But he still mm-hmm. ultimately is trying to be a good person and, and doesn't let it stop him from being a good person or pointing people in the direction of like, you know, 
least darkness, I guess. Like right. he, he can he tries to convince that Jedi and Obi Wan to put his lightsaber down and, and just go live a peaceful life. You know, that's not exactly the wrong thing to do. You know, it's what Obi Wan viewed as like this is a way I can save a life because I don't know what other options we have. Um, and his hope is eventually restored, obviously, throughout the series. But um, I don't think he ever falters to a point where he's like not the bastion of right. Like I guess if there's someone who embodies the light side of the force, like Obi Wan is a character that I always look to. Yeah, and 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 that that kind of just encapsulates like what my encapsulates. Encapsul- encapsulate so many fucking syllables in that word <laughs> uh, that's like what really like sums up again kind of what we've been saying here it's like he's I don't want to use the word squeaky clean but it just sounds funner to say like he is so like squeaky clean by like a Jedi standpoint and Anakin is like so far from they're, they're way more north and south than what the movies portray and I feel like if they portrayed it as like the difference in their ideologies, I feel like that would have made the split hit harder for me. Cause it's like, Oh, okay. I see why there was tension. Cause it, it feel again, cause I've watched like all the other content and shit. It's like, I know mm-hmm. what led to their split, but like, if it's just, if you're just going based off like the movie timeline, for me it always felt a bit unearned like like that whole like for just there's so much more story to be told yeah like i think that people could get a lot out of a series that focuses on obi-wan being like like, even 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 anakin's turn to the dark side just with the movie content for me feels it always felt a tad bit extreme like the death of the death of his mom, wonderful. Not wonderful, but like in terms of like From a storytelling standpoint, yeah. yeah, pushing him that great. Like the forbidden love with Padme, wonderful. Like all that stuff. But in terms of like that final, like him, like him, like him wanting to save Sidious to like learn the power to like save Padme and like chopping off Mace's arm. Like for for me, I al- I always that scene always like pokes me a bit because like when when he goes from the shit i fucked up big time to all right now let's go homicide some kids like like really quickly like yeah like he literally like like, i will do whatever you ask and it's yo like like, whatever yeah yo that's that's always my reaction to that like that line and i know again movie has the movie but it's like like that like Pre that, he was still on the good team. He's the one that went and snitched. Like he, he told Mace that yo, he's definitely the Dark Lord. Like you know what? I almost would have liked better if he didn't tell, because I feel like ooh, okay. Like he like, sends him go to, to his death. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you were saying, like for Mace, he lo- he's just like yeah. Like I, I almost would have liked that better. Like if Anakin didn't find out that Palpatine was Sidious and then go back to Mace and tell him, like even if he like didn't say shit and and then shows up and helps Sidious kill them yeah yeah or yeah. or if Sidious is like fuck now you know my secret well what you trying to do I could either help you save your wife or you can turn me in he's just like alright let's get out of here like even that I would have been like oh, okay he made a decision now it's just like alright my only care is to save Padme like I'm not gonna turn you in and he's like yeah I now that, now that my secret's out I gotta go to Mustafar to get away you coming yeah alright fuck it Hey, I don't trust you, but I'm coming because I need to learn the secret. I almost would have preferred that, but like him going to Mace, hey, he's the Dark Lord. We need to go get him. Mace is like, no, nah, stay here. If you're telling the truth, you have earned my trust, even though there's no reason you should have lost it in the first place by, <laughs> by my logic, but whatever. <laughs> like, and then, you know, like he's def- he like saves Palpatine from getting killed, cutting off the hand. What have I done? All right, let's go kill the kids. Like, it, it's, yeah, like you just said, it's like, really? <laughs> like that's what that's what it was like my man's just said like oh I, like the fools are strong with you like, yeah right, i mean yeah. i do think that they they do set up a few things of like mistrust throughout different clone wars stories that anakin builds up for from the order 1000 um, percent. but yeah if you if you don't see the clone wars it's hard for you to like make that turn 
yeah because because it's like outside of that one conversation that him and mace had like where he's like oh like we grant you the rank the rank of mass but you're not on the count we grant you the rank of master but you are not on this council or or if you're on the council but you're not a master that's what it was you're on this council but we don't grant you the rank of master is what the, the verdict was like that was their only conflict like they didn't even talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, there's there's one other conflict that they like have and it's like it's subtext but in dark disciple they send a jedi to go assassinate dooku which is not the jedi way but they think it's the only way to save the, save more people and end the war quickly the mission ultimately fails right mm. and then anakin's forced with that decision and he says it's not the jedi way and palpatine pushes him into it and he does it and then the person who has been holding him to this ridiculous standard of the jedi code has palpatine in his in his grip he's about to kill the sith lord he's too dangerous to be kept alive and anakin says to him it's not the jedi way and the one person right. who's been fucking riding him being like you have to be an exemplary jedi is about to break the code i think that was like enough hypocrisy in the moment to just fucking make the switch but you but you knew that because of the added content Right. So it's like just in the movie, we get the conversation like he's too dangerous to be kept alive. Do it. We get that and the head cut off. And like I said, him and Mace don't have any interaction other than that conversation of like, oh, you're on this council, but we don't give you the rank of master. What? This is absurd. And all that. So have a seat, young Skywalker. Like that's really like their only turbulence. So it's like when they then have that second conversation where it's just like, Oh, if you're right, you have earned my trust. It's like, when was y'all beefing? He does <laughs> like, say earlier in the movie, not to Anakin, by the way. He says it to Obi Wan and Yoda. He's like, I don't trust him. <laughs> like, okay, you know, right? When he was problem. talking about like a prophecy misread may have been, like, yeah, 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 like all all that stuff. But in it, in it, like I like I take all of that into consideration. But like, it just doesn't play like there's a big problem between them two. Like for it to have gone that way. Like and and I know like he maybe didn't necessarily mean to like cut his hand off like he might have just been trying to block it like possibly who knows like we weren't in the room when it happened we just saw the movie <laughs> but it's just like yeah just like just with movie content I do sometimes feel like you know the the transition from Anakin to Darth Vader pre the burns it's just like more could have. I feel like your threshold for punishment was very short. <laughs> like, this a lot, Star a lot Wars of is better told in a TV show format. I mean, I ain't mad at it. it. Ironically, <laughs> I ain't mad at it. Like, oh, you, you know what? I, I, I'll, I'll round it out with this because I'm. Uh, I keep thinking about more shit. And I want to stay here all day. <laughs> with Anakin's, with Anakin's turn to the dark side, just movie wise, without Clone Wars or all the other canon content. Had the focus been just on saving Padme, like if that had been his prime motivator, like, oh, I don't give a fuck about the order. I just want to save my wife and my kids. Had that been that, then I don't really necessarily need much else to happen because then it's just like tunnel vision, like save my wife, save my wife, save my wife, fuck my vow, save my wife. I already I'm already married and having kids. I already broke my vow. But the fact that they kind of made it like, oh, the dry, the the wanting to save someone he loves, but then they like tried to compound it with Sidious, with Sidious turning Anakin's trust against the order. It didn't feel like there was a lot of reason for him to mistrust the order. If that if that makes sense, like if it, if his prime motive was just to save Padme, then I don't really need all the extra like, oh, I would have liked a better explanation as to why him and Mace were at were at odds or oh, a better representation of like how Obi-Wan was way more by the book and Anakin wasn't. And that led to them butting heads often as brothers. Like I wouldn't I feel like it's the there. like Star Wars version of like someone is like mixed up in some bad shit and they've been lying to it about their family. Mm. And then like their fam like the worst thing that could possibly happen is for their family to find out because it could put them in a lot of danger and then their family finds out and they're like 
oh, but I'm in, I'm in too deep now. So then they they kill their family. Like, like no, no themselves. Like, that, <laughs> like that's what that, it is. That, <laughs> no, but I, yeah, I feel like had like that explanation of it had that just been what played out i feel like that's a lot more relatable because then it's just like all right your wife the mother of your kid like you just said i'm in too deep my lies then turned into more lies i don't know which way is up like i can't go back now if they find out it's bad for everybody everybody's gotta die <laughs> like, like i would have like, i know, I I know which been, one's my real dad <laughs> yeah yeah like i would i wouldn't have been mad at that but like for for Pat May's life to like not have been the primary reason I feel I feel like percentage wise they tried to play it like 50 50 like he half wants to make sure she's okay but the other half was like oh I need to create the seeds of mistrust like saving your wife and your kid isn't enough you, you get what I'm saying like I feel like saving your wife and your kid for any man especially Anakin who lost his mom has been obsessed with this girl his whole life like you know doesn't really feel like he has like a family like i feel like that would have been enough but for them to be like all right the wife ain't enough to push him over i need him to also beef with the jedi but we're not going to give you any context as to why why the relationship's so so shaky like movie wise it there isn't a reason from in my mind movie wise there isn't a reason for anakin to have lost faith in the order that quickly yeah <laughs> i think the only thing that you could and this is a weak argument by the way i'm not even saying it is that the dark side was such a heavy level of temptation that once he gets a small taste of it it's like it's all downhill from there gotcha like he went from like oh yeah you know i smoke weed to be like i'm crack i'm mainlining (laughs) like fentanyl right now (laughs) right Um, in the veins (laughs) but not but that i love that that's that is how it feels it does feel like oh yeah i smoke weed every now and again and now i do heroin like it's just like from from movie standpoint but like adding clone wars and everything else like you do see the build like all the all the shit with um the 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 daughter the father and the son that was super impactful like yeah. on him like super impactful like even even uh like with the father saying like oh like oh it's been preordained that the chosen one is supposed to stay here and take my spot and anakin was just like nah i got shit to do he's like bro bad things will happen if you leave like they go by like <laughs> and like he leaves like that is amazing information to have had going into revenge of the sith like oh shit he said that bad shit was gonna happen if he left because then it plays it plays into like the sins of the father like luke was told not to leave he's like bro don't leave bad shit gonna happen and bad shit happened so it's like that st- like stuff like that i feel like it's so important and like man, man if i us. ever like get hit on the head really hard and i'm in a coma and i come out and i don't remember anything star wars related can you have me watch in like this, this timeline this order? episode <laughs> not, this, not this episode i'll listen to this after but like now i'm just thinking now about like can you imagine if someone like watched episode one two all of the clone wars and then watches revenge of the sith not it would knowing, be so much more gratifying like not knowing what's happening It'd be so much more gratifying. It'd be, oh it'd be infinitely more gratifying. Shit, just watching everything in order, like even watching Andor and then Rogue One, and then like, yeah. I feel like it does add to it. And again, I can say like, we, it's not lost on me that pre the streaming boom, we had to figure out or creatives had to figure out how to fit everything in an hour and thirty minute, maybe two hour runtime. So like. That's not lost on me. Right. And I get, it was like, like it was really yeah. ambitious for its time. Exactly. One thousand percent. So it's like I'm not even on some like, oh, if it was me, I would have did this. This is all hindsight talk. Like this is all like looking back, knowing what I know now and like knowing how intricate and deep divey and flushed out characters can now be because we finally figured out that we can like pair movies with tv instead of it being like an east coast west coast beef two things can exist together and also like big each other up because it's like what i can't fit in the movie hey let me just put it on the tv show hey why why we didn't think about that until like the 2010s i have no idea well here we are (laughs) look we got there we got there because it's like DC was a major uh, uh, com- 
proponent of like that separation of TV and and movies because it's like we were actively getting shit on the on TV like through like oh the my flash. God. You want or, actual good DC content? Look no further than the animation from the, the 2000s oh, yeah. and then the 2010s. It's like it's peak. <laughs> no, without but but they were really big on like oh no, what's happening in the movie don't got shit to do with us. Like yeah. they were really big on that. Like nope, movies is the movies, shows is the shows. And like a lot of people like fed into that bullshit and I feel like I don't I'm not going to say Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was the first show to do it, but it's the one that, like, pops into my head where they started to, like, oh, shit, let's... Like, the Netflix shows and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. charted uncharted... Uh, yeah. Ventured into uncharted territory and actually fleshed out a cinematic, like, like universe. I, I, I can say now, in, like, in hindsight, because I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it definitely went on a bit longer than what it should, but I, I enjoyed it quite thoroughly. The characters kept me going. But, like... When, when Agents of Shield was running in real time, and then when Winter Soldier came out, and like the very next episode of Agents of Shield, spoiler alert, fucking Ward was a Hydra agent to go along with the movie. That fucked me up, dog. Like I was like, oh shit, these Jones is really interconnected. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yo, and when I tell you, like that changed the whole show. Like Agents of Shield was super campy pre-winter soldier like pre the hydra reveal it was super campy it was just like oh i'm gonna watch it because i watch everything else mcu but like when war turned evil and then that that whole fucking storyline and people from the movie started showing up and nick fury showed up in like the season finale and all that stuff i was like oh this is this is dope like the movies are adding context to the film the film are letting the show flush out what they couldn't flesh out in the runtime, like it was like genius television. I was like, why haven't we been doing this? And now that's all we do. <laughs> and it completely <laughs> fell off. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not that, wrong. I do enjoy the first season of Agents of Shield, and like you said, the the Winter Soldier, like where it lines up, it's quite good storytelling for yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, but I got you. If you ever get amnesia, I'll make you watch everything in chronological order. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, I while you're in the coma, it up it, I'll right? play it for you as you're like ambient noise, so you can like be in your coma, comatose state listening to it. Bro. I got you. Bro. I'll wake up and I'll be like, "There is another <laughs> facts." <in this> episode. <laughs> big facts, big big facts. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's wrap this thing up. Let's send it home. Uh, Matt, it where here. can the good people find you on social media before we close this thing out? Absolutely. So uh, you can find me personally at underscore menace to sobriety that is the number two not spelled out uh and as a team you can find me all the same places you find mikey uh catch us over at db4l underscore pod that's db the number four l underscore pod that is on both instagram and twitter and then it is dragon ball for life podcast on facebook and that is also the number four not spelled out um i'm imagining that this will probably come out after this saturday oh, so no, i'm pushing it out like tonight. oh shit i right, bet so we're we're gonna be uh getting getting this out expeditiously so this saturday this saturday this saturday october 21st, october 21st so that way into the year of 2023 in the year 20th of 23 on october 21st in philadelphia pennsylvania cherry street pier to be exact uh we will be hosting or helping host super game day outbreak with the wonderful team over at super game day we are doing a collab uh the db4l family will be hosting a cosplay costume halloween contest uh the event itself is family friendly it is free there's going to be games there's going to be vendors for our contest specifically we are asking for a minimum of a dollar donation to enter the contest anything over a dollar meaning basically two dollars and up we will also get a raffle ticket to win a pretty dope raffle prize but the costume contest also has prizes as well so you potentially could double up if you're lucky with the raffle and come with a really dope contest i'm gonna let mikey break down where all these charitable donations are gonna go to because i'll fuck it up yeah no problem <laughs> so the donation is for Franz fund and essentially what it does is it helps families who can't afford uh pet care 
um, be able to afford those. So underprivileged families can take advantage of this fund. It is through Love City Vet, which happens to be my fiance's uh, place of employment. Um, so come out, wear costumes, enjoy yourself, play some video games, see some cool cosplay, and donate to a good cause if you want to enter our raffle or join the cosplay contest. Um, uh, all proceeds are going to go to Fran's Fund so that we can help out some some four-legged critters uh, that are you know near and dear to our hearts. Um, Big facts. And then you can find me at Mikey underscore the illest, and you can find us at Annie Are You Okay Pod. Podcast, Instagram, a Star Wars podcast. It's, it is indeed a Star Wars podcast, despite our several dick jokes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so uh, we will be doing this. I, I know we didn't get the episode out on Monday, but I'm going to be completely honest. I feel like shit. Matt celebrated his 33rd birthday. 33, so baby. It's my he's Jesus here, year. and it, we're going to take the world by storm this year, buddy. Um, bro, so I'm shout you. outs to you, man. I don't, we don't fucking give you your flowers enough. I, I love this dude. Matt is one I of the hardest working you. people in the podcast space at the moment. You have no idea how much time he sets aside to help us with our endeavors, get the stuff out, be professional, have fun doing it. And on top of it, he's a dope dad, a great friend, and I'm happy to be doing this. You've got my guy. I appreciate that, brother. Like, I, I, t- I tell you all the time, I say on here, I tell you privately, you have done the most with helping me uh try to push forward our dreams that it has become our i'm sorry you have done the most to help me push forward my dream in such a major influential way that it has now transformed into our dream and we're yes, about sir. to take over the world we are about to take over the world we're trying well it's we will see you next time on annie are you okay and may the force be with you and with you later nerds